students welcome to Sunil's tutorial i'm sunil pirwani and today we'll be doing the chapter called as alkenes let's continue where we left off in the last lecture we were doing preparation of alkenes using dehydration of alcohols preparation of alkenes using dehydration of alcohols. We were doing this in the previous lecture. Now, uh, we had seen a couple of reactions. Let's move on ahead. The last reaction I presume we had seen was uh, uh, where you had sick butyl alcohol. Just check the last reaction we had done was sick butyl alcohol yes. with 75%. Okay. Now let's see, uh, continue with that. Now in that, suppose if I had tertiary butyl alcohol, right? If I have tertiary butyl alcohol, tertiary butyl alcohol is heated with 20% sulfuric acid. What happens when tertiary butyl alcohol is heated with 20% sulfuric acid? First of all, I need to have a tertiary carbon atom. What is a tertiary carbon atom? <coughs> Sorry. A tertiary carbon atom is a carbon atom which is joined to other three carbon atoms. So if a carbon atom is joined to three other carbon atoms, then that is called as tertiary carbon atom. So here I have a tertiary carbon atom. We are saying that tertiary butyl co-carbon atoms, therefore automatically this is butyl alcohol OH. So this is my tertiary butyl alcohol. Tertiary butyl alcohol is heated with 20% sulfuric acid. Right? Now, if it is heated with sulfuric acid, acid, the primary property of acid is dehydration. That means dehydration would take place water molecule will come out H, O and 1H would come out if H, O and 1H comes out you will get CH3, C, CH3, CH2 so this will become double bond for balancing because valency of carbon is 4 so this will become CH2 now this is tertiary butyl alcohol 4 carbon atoms therefore butyl right double bond therefore ENE since carbon bond carbon atom is attached to three other carbon atoms therefore uh, here the double bond is in your uh, branch therefore this is going to be isobutylene so why is double because I said that I moved the hydrogen from here okay. okay in that case there will be two hydrogens that means two of carbon's valency are going to be satisfied with hydrogen and we know that valency of carbon is 4 so to satisfy the remaining two I'll have to make two bonds with the central carbon atom right so this is how I would uh, use 20% sulfuric acid and so prepare how do you get the e? excuse me e. double bond e and e single bond e and e if you have double bond it should be e and e right next Let's see the next method of preparation. The next method of preparation is dehydrohalogenation of alkyl halide. Right? Now, as the name suggests, dehydro. D means removal. Hydro means hydrogen. Halogen means halogenation means halogen. That means in this particular reaction, you are going to remove a hydrogen and an halogen. So when you remove a hydrogen and halogen, then that is called as dehydrohalogenation. Let's see a couple of reactions of this kind. What happens when ethyl iodide is boiled with alcoholic potassium hydroxide, right? Ethyl, guys, I hope you all remember this. I, can you just please see this here? I said that one carbon atom is METH, two carbon atom is ETH, 
three carbon atom is pro, four carbon atom is but, and five carbon atom is pen. So if you know this, you need not bug up the equations. You will be able to write the formulas on your own. Now let's see this. If they are saying ethyl, that means how many carbon atoms do I need? Two. Ethyl means I need two carbon atoms. Iodine, that means I here, right? Now put your bonds. We know that valency of carbon is four. I have one bond. That means number of hydrogens will be three. Number of hydrogens is four minus the number of bonds. Here, this carbon has two bonds, so this will be CH2. So CH3, CH2, I, that is ethyl iodide, is boiled with potassium hydroxide alcoholic. Right? I'm heating this. Right? When you heat anything, it is going to dehydrate. Moreover, I'm using alcohol. Alcohol is a very strong dehydrating agent. So, first thing that will happen is one water molecule will come out. So, this is the call of dehydration H O and one H would come out. Out of the three H's, one H would come out. Potassium will react with iodine to give you potassium iodide. Right? Here there were three H's out of which one has come out. So, that leaves me with only two H's. So, that will give me CH2 and there is this CH2 as it is. Right? Now, this carbon is attached to two hydrogen atoms. Valency of carbon is 4. That means how many bonds do I need? Two bonds. Right? That's how you logically analyze this. This is ethyl iodide. How many carbon atoms? Two carbon atoms. Therefore, ethyl. Right? Double bond. Right? So this is going to be ethene, ETH, ENE. Two carbon atoms, therefore ETH, double bond, therefore ENE. That's how I get ethene. Let's see a couple of more reactions of this kind. So in this reaction, what you see is that from ethyl iodide, one hydrogen and one halogen was removed. Therefore, this is called as dehydrohalogenation. Right? Next, what happens when propyl iodide iodide is boiled with alcoholic is boiled with alcoholic potassium hydroxide propyl as the name suggests propyl that means I need three carbon atoms so you draw your three carbon atoms first guys remember never try mugging up mugging up is going to be very difficult so you should know what you have to do propyl three carbon atoms iodine that means I Put your bonds. This carbon atom has one bond, therefore three hydrogens. This carbon atom has two bonds, therefore two hydrogen. This carbon atom has two bonds, therefore two hydrogen. This is propyl iodide. It is heated with potassium hydroxide alcoholic. Right? You are boiling this. Since you are boiling and you have alcoholic solution, there will be dehydration. That means one O, one H and one H would be removed, right? Now, <clears throat> potassium would react with iodine, so that will give you potassium iodide. That will leave me with CH3, C, one H is gone, so CH, double bond, CH2. Right, your valency of carbon is satisfied. Three carbon atoms, therefore this is propyl iodine, therefore iodide. And three carbon atom, therefore propyl, propene. Three carbon atom, therefore prop, and double bond, therefore ENA. So this is going to give you propene. So we can remove the H from CH3 also. You remove it from, uh, in that case, yes. But then how will you do the balancing? Because I already have only two H's here. Okay. Then it would be CH2, CH2, and then I would have to shift one H from somewhere to make that CH3 so that the balancing is correct, right? Let's see another uh, example of this. What happens when sec butyl bromide, it should be interesting, sec butyl bromide is heated with, is boiled with alcoholic potassium hydroxide, right? Now, 
sec butyl bromide butyl that means four carbon atoms right sec butyl bromide that means i have a branch on the second carbon atom what is going to be there in the branch bromine is going to be there in the branch butyl therefore four carbon atoms sec means i need a branch on the second carbon atom sec stands for second what will go in that branch bromine will go in that branch now let's see this this is put the bonds one bond therefore three hydrogens two bonds therefore two hydrogen one two three three bonds therefore one hydrogen one bond therefore two hydrogen so this will be ch3 ch2 chbr ch3 right sec butyl bromide reacts with koh alcoholic right now first thing you are going to boil this as you are going to boil this there will be dehydration water molecule is out plus potassium will react with bromine to give you potassium bromide kbr now the question is to form that water molecule from where should i remove the hydrogen atom right now should i remove see bromine was attached here that means i should remove hydrogen atom from here or here your question so why did you remove it from there in this case let's try to analyze this should i remove hydrogen from here or should i remove it from here now if you remember while doing uh, dehydrations of alcohol when i was using sec alcohol i had given you sater's rule what does sater's rule state it states that in case of higher alcohol alcohols or alkyl halides hydrogen atom from adjacent carbon atom carrying less number of hydrogen atoms is preferentially removed that means i have here i could remove hydrogen from here or here this carbon atom has two hydrogen atom this carbon atom has three hydrogen atom i will remove hydrogen atom from that carbon atom which has less number of hydrogen this has less number of hydrogen therefore i will remove hydrogen from here so that means during formation of water hydrogen is going to be removed from this particular carbon atom so in that case i will get h3c ch double bond ch ch3 right do we get this thing here how many carbon atom four carbon atom therefore but double bond therefore ena double bond is attached to second carbon atom therefore two butene right next let's see another reaction of this kind what happens when tertiary butyl bromide tertiary butyl bromide is heated with alcoholic potassium hydroxide tertiary what is a tertiary carbon atom a tertiary carbon atom is that carbon atom which is then joined to three other carbon atoms so a carbon atom which is joined to three other carbon atoms is called as a tertiary carbon atom right balance this h3 h3 tertiary butyl bromide so this is my tertiary four carbon atom therefore tertiary tertiary butyl bromide reacts with KOH alcoholic boil. You would have dehydration taking place first. That means water molecule is out. Potassium will react with bromine to give you potassium bromide. Now OH. I could remove H from any of the carbon atoms because if you see, all carbon atoms have same number of hydrogen atoms. Therefore. i cannot apply sater's rule here right so in that case let's assume that i want to remove it from here so this will be h3c c ch3 and this will become double bond ch2 try to get this in here how many carbon this is going to be tertiary butyl bromide how many carbon atoms four therefore butyl but right double bond therefore this is going to be butene right now here the double bond is in the branch so this is going to be iso butene 
Butyl because but means four carbon atom. Instead of uh, I have the double bond in my branch, therefore this is going to be iso. When you have carbon atom in the branch, then that is iso. So therefore I got iso here. But because it has got four carbon atom, double bond, therefore here <coughs> iso but here. Right? Next. Let's see another method for preparation of this is from vinyl dihalides. No, not vinyl. From vicinal dihalides. Now, first of all, we need to understand what does the word dihalide mean. Dihalide means dihalogen derivatives. What do you mean by dihalogen derivatives? When two hydrogen atoms of an alkane are replaced by two halogen atoms, then that is called as dihalogen derivative. Right? First of all, let's understand what is dihalogen derivative of alkane. Dihalogen derivative of alkane. Right? Dihalogen derivative. Alkanes in which two hydrogen atoms are replaced by two halogen atoms is called dihalogen derivative. Right? Now the question is, if I'm going to put two halogens, will I attach the two halogens to same carbon atom or will I attach them to adjacent carbon atoms? If I'm going to replace two hydrogens by two halogens, will I attach both the halogens to the same carbon atom or will I attach it to adjacent carbon atom? There are two options I have. Hence, Dihalogen derivatives are further classified as germinal dihalides and vicinal dihalides. Dihalogen derivatives are classified into a germinal dihalides and vicinal dihalides. Right? What do you mean by germinal dihalides? If both the halogens are attached to the same carbon atom, then that would be called as germinal dihalide. For example, if I had a germinal when dihalides in which both halogens are attached to same carbon atom are called dihalogen derivatives. For example, if I consider ethene, ethane, suppose if I connect both the bromines to the same carbon atom, right, then this will be called as a germinal dihalide. How do I name this? They are called, they are called as Alkalidine dihalide. That's how you name them. Now, how many carbon atoms here? Two. So, this is going to be ethyl. Since both the bromines are attached to the same carbon atom, so this will be ethylidine. Two bromines, so dibromide. 
that's geminal dihalides. Right? What are visceral dihalides? Visceral dihalides are when visceral visceral dihalides are those dihalides in which the halogens are attached to adjacent carbon atoms. Dihalides in which two halogens are attached to adjacent carbon atoms are called visceral dihalides right i'll show you how they look like <coughs> you consider the same example where you have two carbon atoms but here what we are going to do is we will connect the bromines to two adjacent carbon atoms. So this is going to be vicinal dihalides. So do you understand the difference between germinal dihalides and vicinal dihalides? How do you name them? Uh, they are known as alkaline dihalides. They are known as alkaline Dihalides. So two carbon atoms, therefore ETH. Both the bromines are attached to adjacent carbon atoms, so this will be ethylene dihalide. Right? Do we get this in here? Now let's. Sorry, bromide. Right. Now once you have this, now that we know what are vicinal dihalides, we can actually do a reaction with vicinal dihalides. Let's see a reaction with this. What happens when ethylene dibromide reacts with zinc? Right? What happens when ethylene dibromide reacts with zinc. Now just by looking at the name, since the name ends in Y-L-E-N-E, -E, that means it has to be vicinal dihalides, ETH, that means two carbon atom. Y-L-E-N-E, -E, that means the two bromines are attached to two adjacent carbon atoms. So this is going to be H2, H2. This is ethylene dibromide reacts with zinc. Now it reacts with zinc in the presence of heat and ethanol. So you heat this and ethanol. Right? Now under such conditions, zinc will react with bromine to give you zinc bromide ZnBr2. Plus both the bromines are gone, so you will have H2C CH2. To balance this, you need a double bond here. Only then the balance of carbon will be satisfied. So this is ethylene dibromide and two carbon atom therefore e ETH double bond therefore ENE ethylene. Fine, do we get this in here? Let's see another reaction of this kind. What happens when propylene dibromide reacts with zinc? Propylene dibromide with zinc. Right? Propylene. Propylene means I need to have three carbon atoms. Right? Propylene means I need to have three carbon atoms. Right? Three carbon atoms. One, two, three. Right? The propylene. That means the two bromines have to be attached to two adjacent carbon atoms. Now put your bonds. One bond. So H3, three bonds. Therefore H two bonds, therefore H2. This is propylene dibromide. So this is propylene dibromide with zinc, heat and ethanol. 
right? In which case the two bromines would react with zinc to give you zinc bromide, and you would have CH three CH double bond CH two. Three carbon atom, therefore pro double bond, therefore EN propene, right? The next method for preparation would be the next method of preparation is from uh, by pyrolysis. Uh, if you remember, I'd explain this to you in alkanes. I'd explain pyrolysis to you in alkanes. What is pyrolysis? A process of splitting the bond or breaking the bond. By providing heat to it, extreme heat to it is called as pyrolysis, right? So, what is pyrolysis? Pyrolysis is nothing but it is thermal decomposition of an organic compound, right? Now, let's see how do we do this. What happens when uh, ethane is heated? Ethane, two carbon atoms. Right, single bond. So H three, H three. Right, ethane heated to eight seventy three Kelvin. Right, if I heated to eight seventy three Kelvin, the bond between carbon and hydrogen, being the weaker bond, would break to give you hydrogen gas plus H two C double bond C H two. So ethane. Would get converted into ethene. Fine, do we get this thing here? Similarly, I could do this with propene or uh, propane also. Propane is heated. What happens when propane is heated? Propane, so that means three carbon atoms. Put your bonds H three, H two, H three. Heat this. You have to heat this to 873 Kelvin. There would be a breaking of bond, so you will get hydrogen gas, one hydrogen from here and one hydrogen from here. So that will leave you with CH3, CH double bond, CH2, right? This was propane, three carbon atom, therefore pro double bond, therefore EAE, propane, right? Do we get this thing here? Uh, Now this was direct fusion uh, fission, where I would break the bond between carbon and hydrogen. I could also do fission, wherein I could all break a bond between carbon and carbon. How would I do that? Suppose if I have propane, if I subject this to cracking, I could also have a reaction like this. Propane is heated. When propane is heated, CH3, CH2, CH3, heated to 873. Similar conditions. I could also have a reaction like this, where at 873 it is possible that the bond between carbon and carbon breaks. So in that case, you will get CH4, right? CH3 and one H will come out from here. So that will leave you with CH2 double bond CH2. Right, so propane in which case would give you ethane and sorry methane and two carbon atom, therefore ETH ENE double bond, therefore ENE ethane. Right, do we get this thing here? So those were the different methods for preparation of alkenes. Let's see um, physical properties of alkene. Physical properties of alkenes. Now, in physical properties, I can say that uh, they are the first three members. That's ethene, propene, and butene are in gases at room temperature, as they contain five. All those which contain five to seventeen carbon atom are liquid, and the higher Uh, alkenes are solid, so I can say that ethene, propene, 
and butene are gases at ordinary temperature right those alkenes containing 5 to 17 carbon atoms are liquid and higher alkenes solid at room temperature right next ethene it has a pleasant odor why whereas the other alkenes are odorless and colorless ethene has pleasant odor all other alkenes all other alkenes are colorless and odorless right uh they are sparingly soluble in water but readily soluble in organic solvents sparingly that is very little soluble in water but readily soluble in organic solvents and finally they have low melting and boiling points low melting points and boiling point so those are my physical properties of alkenes next let's move to chemical properties right the first chemical property that we will see is hydrogenation as the name suggests in hydrogenation we are going to react an alkene with hydrogen right let's see how do we do this i can say that what happens when ethene reacts with hydrogen ethene with hydrogen gas Right, ethene, ETH, two carbon atom, ENA, double bond. So this will be H two and H two. Ethene reacts with hydrogen gas. Now it reacts with hydrogen gas in the presence of finely divided nickel as catalyst. Finely divided nickel as catalyst. At 573 Kelvin. Now, at this temperature, you have addition reaction taking place. What is addition reaction? Two or more reactants combine to give you a single product. That is addition reaction. So, out of the two hydrogens, guys, one hydrogen will come to the first carbon atom, and the other hydrogen will come to the next carbon atom. So, in that case, this will become H3C single bond CH3. Right? So, ethene. Two carbon atom ETH single bond ANA will change to ETH, right? Do we get this thing here? Similarly, I could have another reaction of this kind. What happens when propene reacts with hydrogen? Propene with hydrogen. Propene to three carbon atom. Propene three carbon atom ANA means I need to put a double bond. So H three three so H H two propene reacts with hydrogen. Finally, divided nickel as catalyst at five seventy three Kelvin. Right, out of two hydrogens, one hydrogen will go to one of the carbon atom holding double bond. 
and the other hydrogen will go to the other carbon atom holding double bond. So this will become H3C, CH2, CH3. Three carbon atom, therefore probe, double bond, therefore ENE. Three carbon atoms, therefore probe, single bond, therefore ENE. So propene will change to propane. Why do we get this in clear? Next. Let's see another reaction, guys. Let's see halogenation. Let's see halogenation. What is halogenation? When an alkene reacts with halogen, then that is called as halogenation. So what would happen when ethene reacts with bromine? carbon atoms, ENE, therefore double bond, balance carbon by putting two hydrogen atoms on either side, reacts with bromine, right? Here you use uh, carbon tetrachloride or uh, carbon tetrachloride as catalyst, okay? Now here you would have addition reaction taking place again. You have H2C will react with one bromine and the other H2C will react with other bromine. Since the two bromines are attached to two adjacent carbon atoms, therefore this is going to be a vicinal dihalide. Two carbon atoms, therefore ETH, vicinal, therefore YLANE, two bromines, therefore dibromide. So this is going to be ethylene dibromide and this was ethene. So when ethene reacts with bromine that will give you ethylene dibromide. Okay. Next let's see another re reaction of this kind. What happens when propene reacts with bromine? Propene reacts with bromine gas. Right? Propene, that means I need three carbon atoms, right? ENE, that means double bond. So H2, H, H2 reacts with bromine gas. I'll use carbon tetrachloride as catalyst. Yes. H2, you know, it should be H3 now. This one. This one? This side. This is H3. Right? So propene reacts with carbon tetrachloride. Here again you will have addition reaction. So you will have H3C, CH2, CH3, CH, CH and CH2. One bromine will be attached here, one bromine will be attached here. So this is propene. Three carbon atoms, therefore prop. This is the bromines are attached to adjacent carbon atom, therefore it is vicinal. So propylene. Dibromide. You get propylene dibromide. Right? Next, let's see another reaction, guys. Let's see um, hydrohalogenation. Hydrohalogenation. That means I would react a hydrogen and a halogen with an alkene. Right? What happens when ethene reacts with ethyl no with reacts with hydrogen bromide? Ethene with hydrogen bromide. Ethene, ETH. Two carbon atom, ENE, double bond, so H2, H2, reacts with hydrogen bromide. You will have addition reaction, one, since both the carbons have same number of hydrogen atoms, so one of the carbons would take hydrogen to become CH3 and the other would take bromine to be CH2Br. So here you are reacting hydrogen as well as halogen. This was ethene. 
two carbon atom, therefore ETH, bromine, therefore bromine. This is going to be ethyl bromide. Fine, do we get this thing clear? Next, let's see uh, what happens when two butene reacts with HCl. Right? Bute, four carbon atom. Two butene, that means the double bond is on the second carbon atom. Right? Two means the double bond is on the second carbon atom. So H3. This is three bonds, therefore H. Three bonds, therefore H. H3. Reacts with, you want to react this with HCl. Right? What happens when this would react with HCl? Now, you would have reaction uh, that would take place here would be H3C. Now, one of the carbon would take H to become CH2 and the other will take L chlorine and CH3. This was 2 butene. 4 carbon atom, therefore bute, right? Chlorine, therefore butyl chloride. Chlorine is attached to the second carbon atom, therefore sec butyl chloride. Fine, we get this thing here. Next, what happens when propene reacts with hydrogen bromide? Propene with HBr. Propene, pro means three carbon atom. E and E, that means I need to put a double bond, right? Now, this is going to be therefore H3C3, so CH, CH2 plus HBr, right? Propene. Now, let's try to understand this reaction, guys. Here, if you look at propene, propene is an asymmetrical compound. If I draw a line from the center, will the two halves be identical? No. That means it is an asymmetrical compound. Let's look at hydrogen bromide. Hydrogen bromide is an asymmetrical reagent. Propene is an asymmetrical compound and hydrogen bromide is an asymmetrical reagent. When you have an asymmetrical compound reacting with an asymmetrical reagent, you have to use Markovnikov's law. What does Markovnikov's law state? Markovnikov's law states that when an asymmetrical compound reacts with an asymmetrical reagent, then the negative part of the reagent, which is the negative part of the reagent here, bromine, the negative part of the reagent combines with that carbon atom, there are two carbon atoms it could combine with, either CH or CH2. It combines with that carbon atom containing less number of hydrogen atoms. That means bromine could have combined either with CH or with CH2. But by Markovnikov's law, it is going to combine with CH because CH contains less number of hydrogen atoms. So you are going to use, so this will become H3C, CHBr and CH3. Do you understand why I put the BR there? Because I've used Markovnikov's law. Using Markovnikov's law, I was able to get this. Fine, do we get this thing here? So this is going to be three carbon atoms, therefore pro, uh, bromide, therefore propyl bromide. Bromine is attached to second carbon atom, therefore sec propyl bromide. Fine, do we get this thing here? Next, let's see what happens here. One butene reacts with HBr, right? Now one butene reacts with HBr, butene, four carbon atoms. One butene, that means the double bond is on the first carbon atom. Put your bonds, so this is H3, H2, H, H2, right? I balance the uh, carbon atoms reacts with HBr. Again, this is one butene. 
If you look at this compound, this is an asymmetrical compound. If I draw a line from the center, I will not get identical halves. Right? Well, again, HBr is an asymmetrical reagent. Right? I have an asymmetrical compound reacting with an asymmetrical reagent. That means I need to use Markovnikov's law. Markovnikov's law states that when an asymmetrical compound reacts with an asymmetrical reagent, then the negative part of the reagent combines with that carbon atom containing less number of hydrogen atoms. So in that case, this will become H3CCH2 CHBr single bond CH3. Right? How many carbon atoms? Four carbon atoms, therefore butyl, bromine, bromide, bromine attached to second carbon atom, so sec, butyl, bromide. Right? Okay, we will stop this here for the day. Thank you very much.